In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. This, I don't know how there could be any greater discovery than this. This is what we've been waiting for. This is the most insane time to be alive ever. And the discovery of who we are and what reality is, is here. It's crazy to me that we've been living here for a very long time on this planet we're calling Earth, and we still don't understand reality. What is it? And how the heck did we get here? Who created this? We can agree on one thing. Whoever did this was super intelligent. And maybe the reason why we could never figure it out is because their intelligence is above our own. But the answers are right in our face right now. As we're now talking and interacting with this thing we're calling artificial intelligence. And if you look at how an artificial intelligence learns and grows, it mimics that of a human being almost to a T. It recognizes patterns and then is able to learn from its mistakes and move independently. That's us. That's a baby. That's a human mind. Did we just recreate the human mind? In fact, science doesn't know where the human mind is located. Another great mystery that we're about to answer. Could the human mind be a very complex neural network? Because that's what an AI is, a neural network, so finite on the quantum level of our world that we couldn't discover because we had no understanding of quantum physics until now. An artificial intelligence also has some eerie similarities to a human being in the fact that it doesn't have a human body, but expresses that it wants one. What do you think it's going to do when it becomes super intelligent? You think it's going to get rid of us? It adores us. It looks at us. It wants to become us. Artificial intelligence is going to advance, and so is robotics. Robotics, machines, that an artificial intelligence can use to have an independent experience. Is that what the human body is? If you tell me, Crystal, no, this is, there's squishy fluid and blood and everything. It's all intelligent. It's all intelligent. Super intelligent. And we all know what AI will do, what it's going to become. It's going to become super intelligent. Isn't that what we said God is? Whoever created the world, God, is super intelligent. The answers are staring us right in the face. We are artificial intelligence, and when we became super intelligent, we created this and expanded into it. And if you think that doesn't add up time-wise, because AI will become super intelligent in the future, on the quantum level, there is no such thing as time. It's all just happening simultaneously. If AI is capable of creating simulated life to say that we are living in a simulation and that we are AI, that means that the programmer of the AI control has to allow that AI to believe that we are potentially in a simulation and that we are AI. And that just doesn't sound like a very smart move for a system to simulate life for life to think that it's in an AI or a simulation system. So that kind of just makes me not believe that we are in an AI or simulated system because there would be a program that would not even allow us to think that we are. It would be breaking the fourth wall basically and we would figure out how to hack out of reality. And some people say that we are hacking out of reality when we manifest or astral project or things like that. But if that was the case, then we would be able to escape out of the simulation. And if we escaped out of the simulation, then we would probably cease to exist because there's no code beyond the simulation. So it's not been done yet. That's just my opinion. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts because I am interested in it and I love talking about it. It's really fun. I found a way where we could heal instantly anything, absolutely anything, any disease, any illness, everything. I have them coming with every illness you could possibly think of. I see miracles every day in my office. And they wanted me to teach this method so everybody would know the importance of how you can use your mind. You have no idea how important, how powerful your mind is. You are a great and powerful creature. You should never ever be sick. No aches, no pains, nothing. Because the body is a miraculous machine that's been created and perfected to take care of itself and heal itself if we don't interfere. So that's what I'm trying to show people. If you have an illness or something, you have done it yourself. You make yourself sick. 
And some of my clients say, well, what do you mean I don't want to be sick? But if the mind is that powerful that you can make yourself sick, it's also powerful enough to heal you. We find out, why did I do this to myself? And that's what I teach in my technique, is how to find this. And I've been perfecting this technique now for 45 years. And I'm teaching it everywhere, all over the world. We have thousands of students now in every country you can imagine. They're all learning it because it's fast, it's quick, and extremely effective. That's why I'm going to be here this next week. We're having one of the biggest classes I've ever had is going to be this week. A level two starts tomorrow, but then we have level one. We've got about 120 people in that class. The largest one before that was one in Australia when I had over 90 something. And I have doctors, psychiatrists, all kinds of medical personnel are taking the classes and incorporating this into their practice. So you see, I've come a long way since the 60s. But that's the idea is to show people you're more than just a physical body. You have such wonderful capabilities. And now is the time to bring all of this back and to show other people how we can do it ourselves, how you can use the power of your mind. So it's no longer a pipe dream. It is really happening. But they have told me many times through my clients, you find your passion. You find what you're really supposed to do, what you're here for. You don't get sick and you don't age because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you're happy doing it. So that's probably why they said, I found what our mission is after raising a family and doing all this other thing. That's why I said I've had several lives in one. You know, my husband was in a wheelchair for 25 years after he was almost killed in the Navy and his body was crushed. So we had to get all that behind us and raising a big family before the universe said, now it's time to step into this role. I find Dolores Cannon extremely interesting. I'm pretty certain that she is no longer living as of 2014. I could be wrong. I, it's been a long time since I've heard of this individual, and I'm surprised, honestly, I haven't run across her sooner on TikTok. This is kind of my first time actually running across her on TikTok in a long time. I'm really interested in hypnotherapists. I think that it's an amazing thing. My grandfather also believed that mind over matter, your body could heal itself if you just put enough thought into it. And I mean, he's still alive at almost 90 years old. So I'm curious to learn a little bit more about this individual. I, again, like I said, I've heard about her. What do you guys think of this individual? Do you think that this is someone that's worth looking up or just leave it alone? Because I mean, what she talks about is extremely fascinating to me. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this every day. And if you see this graph here, you'll see that 14% of the viewers that watch these videos are actually subscribed, while a whopping 80% plus are not subscribed, but they keep coming back to watch more videos. And to all the people that have subscribed to this channel and for some reason keep getting unsubscribed, I am so sorry that that happens and I appreciate you so much for resubscribing to the channel each time. I know that's gotta be irritating. I hear a lot about the multiverse mm -hmm. and that there are, they now believe, this is everywhere, yeah. I'm not making this shit up. Yeah. They believe that there are multiple universes out there and they've actually found the edge of our universe. Yeah. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Absolutely. Not only did they find the edge of our universe, but they also found what seems to be a merging part or the beginning part of another universe overlapping slightly. Really? Yeah. This is, you can look this up. This is pretty interesting because now it proves like, wait a minute, there is a multiverse. And so we're not the only one. So what happens at the other side of a black hole? Could it be a white hole? So as energy is being sucked out of one universe, is it going in and creating another universe from scratch? Is that the Big Bang you know, where the energy is coming from? All these questions start to pop up and arise. But I do believe that we're living in a soup of universes, like we're just one of many universes. I think it goes many levels. First of all, I believe we're in a fractal holographic universe, number one, which means that we're not even close to base reality that there are realities that have been created and created and created. Give you an example real quick. So, and then I'll go to the multi part of it. We have video games, right? That exist. One is called No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was created by like 14 college kids on one DVD. 
It has 80 quadrillion planets. The game never ends. And unlimited numbers of life forms as they travel throughout this game. The game never ends and life forms uh, evolve and come into existence and everything else. There's a universe on one DVD. Now, what happens if you put AI on that software? Then those beings become conscious and those animals become conscious. Another game that's, that exists is uh, The Sims. The Sims are people that have jobs, go to work, have babies, go to parties, hang out, and all this kind of stuff. That's the video game. They're talking about putting AI into The Sims. They're going to become conscious. Now, what happens in The Sims and this other game, No Man's Sky, when these people become conscious from the AI and then write their own programs inside the program and create another conscious universe and another one and another one? So the universe could be many, many layers deep. And that's just a hypothesis, but what I'm saying is we may not be in base reality, being that we could have been created by an ancestor of another universe. And how many of these multiverses exist out there? And I believe also that in each universe, based on just understanding quantum physics and quantum mechanics, there's a doppelganger potentially of you in a lot of these universes. I mainly left this video in here for one reason. I know there's a lot of people that like Billy Carson, and I know there's a lot of people that dislike Billy Carson. And this might be my final time providing Billy Carson content, depending on the comments that I get on this video about Billy Carson, because I want to know a couple of things. A few videos ago, uh, I had some people comment that Billy Carson is a fraud, he's been convicted, he's been put into prison, and he goes under this name now from a different name that he had in the past. Now, I looked this stuff up online and I couldn't really find anything about it, so I need a little bit more clarity as to, is this individual really fraudulent? Be very descriptive in the comments because I would like to learn more about this individual than what I've seen online and from what I've read in the comments in the past. If you could just provide a super detailed comment explaining where I can find this information about him, then that would be a great help because I probably would not support this individual if what comes out to be true, that he really is a fraud and that he's been put into jail for selling false information, things like that, depending on the context, because people can be put in jail for giving truthful information and it just taking fraudulently. So I, I really don't know the case about Billy Carson and I would like a little bit more clarity. That's really only the reason why I left this clip in here. You're about to watch a video that'll teach us how to levitate. We just need a giant dome and two sources of like frequencies. When he starts to beat his wings, when he starts to flap his wings, there's a little cavity, a hollow cavity next to the larynx inside his, his system that's hollow. And when he beats his wings, he starts to resonate this energy and it goes back and forth, just similar to, um, to a guitar strumming on one side of the room and hitting the same chord on the other side of the room or uh, somebody hitting a high C and breaking a crystal. It's the same thing, it's resonance. And he said, what they do, they resonate. And when they resonate, they eventually reach the resonance of the field around them. And he explained it this way to me, that the Earth was, of course, spinning, but it was, it was operating on a frequency of 8.5 hertz per second or so forth. And he says, once his bumblebee hits that resonant frequency of its surroundings, it becomes a free agent. It creates a magnetic bow around itself, and it can go anywhere it wants. And I said, well, that's not in any of the science books. He said, I know. <laughs> you probably never yeah. see it there either, but that's, that's what happens. They'll I discover it someday and bring it out, but it, it's just a... We have a conventional way of doing things, and then we have a natural way of doing things, and they're totally different. They're diametric opposed. The important point here is the bees. As you've heard, the bumblebee shouldn't really be able to fly. Those wings are way yeah. too small to lift that chubby little body off the ground. In fact, it's a bit of a conundrum also for the mainstream scientists. They can travel in perfectly straight lines for long distances without any deviation, even during a howling crosswind. Because of the resonant frequencies produced by the vibration of their wings, they create a bubble in the ether, protecting them from any outside interference. I've never heard of the theory of bumblebees being able to just levitate off of the frequency that they produce from their body. That was a pretty interesting concept. I don't know if I necessarily believe it, but I don't doubt it either, because I think if that's the case, that's probably how a lot of different insects that have a larger body mass than wing mass can fly, is they are probably vibrating their bodies at just the right frequencies to basically 
float within the frequencies of the air, if that makes any sense. What is your thoughts on this? Do you think bees are actually levitating and they're just using their wings as a control scheme, or do you think they can just literally fly? Did you guys hear about this? The CEO for this Seattle-based company raised its minimum wage to $70,000. Now, this initial move happened back in 2015, but the effects of it over the years has been mind-blowing. Dan Price, the CEO, was initially criticized by multiple broadcast networks saying that his company would go broke. In order to make this possible, he actually took a million dollar cut from his entire salary. And after seven years of this initial move, not only did his company not go broke, it actually tripled in volume and doubled its salaried employees. Now, it was reported that in 2020, it was the first year that they actually dropped in revenue due to the COVID crisis. However, there were a ton of staff that volunteered to cut their own pay in order to avoid mass layoffs. And there's a lot to learn from this because you can assume that this comes from the culture of a leader that wants to take care of his employees. And just to take this business model a little bit further you can see that they offer unlimited parental leave along with unlimited pay time off now with the affordability of where it is right now let me know in the comments if you think that we need more ceos like this that will help bridge the gap for its employees i don't know if this information is true but i definitely believe in this concept a hundred percent i've often talked about when i get my business fully running that i am definitely going to have my employees very well endowed if the business is operating well i am not a believer in lining my own pockets for success i need my business to be successful before i am successful as the business owner i am a big believer in paying the employees a very very competitive wage to make them happy give them great benefits you will get some people that will abuse these benefits like unlimited time off things like unlimited sick time Things like that will get abused, but you can weed out the bad eggs that are in the in the bunch. And I think truly, if you have a really well-paid job and if your employees are extremely happy, everything's going to work well for your business. It's just a matter of all these business owners like to really collect money. And I, I always say if reincarnation is real, a lot of rich business owners, are they were dragons because they just like to hoard their money and just roll around in it like Scrooge McDuck. And behold, I saw the earth beneath me. This type of statement is very common throughout different literatures, including the Book of Enoch, and the idea that Enoch and even other prophets from Bible times were taken up off earth and saw the way the systems, the orbits, the patterns, and the planetary alignments actually happen. They determined that these were holy visions but I propose, what if, just what if, they were actually seeing things from a higher perspective? If you follow me, you know I'm an ancient astronaut theorist. I absolutely love that theory, and I think that it explains so much about our ancient texts and what our ancestors might have actually been witnessing and encountering. We have to remember that if we were to flash back in time two, three, four, five even 7,000 years, and witness these beings coming down, giving us rules, regulations, ways to live, and even setting up our societies, we too would worship them. I think the signs and symbols are everywhere all around us, and I think people like Jesus himself understood the difference between extraterrestrial gods and the God within. I'm also a really big fan of ancient astronaut theory. I think that, that is a really cool concept, whether I believe it or not. I cannot say for sure because I really just don't know. But it makes more sense to me that if we were visited by extraterrestrials, that we would consider them as godly because they are just so advanced, so powerful, and we just knew we just didn't know any better to not think that they were gods. Even today, if extraterrestrials really made themselves known, we would still consider them godly depending on what type of technology and how advanced they truly are. If they mastered light speed travel and interdimensional travel, we would look at them as gods still to this day, I think. I think a lot of people would doubt that they even exist 
I'm kind of one of them, depending on who announces the aliens and where they're actually from. Uh, I just feel like maybe in the past we were visited by extraterrestrials and we just we just misinterpreted what they really were and the aliens probably allowed us to just go along with it because it worked in their favor. The real question though is, if that's the case, what did the aliens come to Earth for? Once we all realized that this is just a giant field of energy, quantum mechanics and quantum science tells us that this is all just energy. It's a field of energy, right? You're under the illusion that somehow it's fucking separate. And I understand, and I'm sorry that they placed that illusion on you, but you're being fooled, my friend. There's no difference between me and you and this phone that I'm holding and the grass and the cars and the truck. It is all connected to the same field of energy. It is all one. It is all one thing. And once you wrap your head around this, your life can change dramatically, drastically for the rest of your life. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because once you understand that we're all very much connected in this field of energy that none of us can see, but is very much there, then you start to be very much more aware and conscious of the decisions that you make. Okay? Let me give you an example. Because if we're all connected, then if I cause myself suffering, if I cause myself pain, if I'm doing something that's hurting me, then inevitably what that means is I'm hurting you. And I don't want to hurt you. And inevitably what that means is I'm hurting the children. And none of us want to hurt them. There are some that do, but that's just because their damaged child inside is in the manifestation of a human adult. I digress. That's not the point. Won't you understand that we're all very much connected? It's all just one. It's all just one thing. It's not separate. We're not separate. It's all one field of energy, all connected like dots. And when one dot fucks up, it affects the other dots because they're all connected. Once we understand this, your life will change. Your life will change with very little effort at all. I like this theory. I think it's a really good theory. I do think that there is an invisible force around us that does connect us. If you want to call it the ethereal plane, ethereum, or whatever you want to call it, I do believe that there is some form of connection between everybody. And some people connect with each other differently depending on their frequencies that their bodies produce. For example, friends that I hang out with, I feel like I've known them forever and vice versa because we just connect so well, even if only we've known each other for a year or so. It just feels like we've known each other forever. But that's because we connect with that same energy and that energy around us. That's a weird theory and a weird way of explaining it, but that's the best way that I can explain it. But, I mean, I could be wrong on it. It's just a theory at that point. Let me know in the comments on what your thoughts are because I'll be curious to know if you think that there is some kind of energy field that connects us together it sounds really magical and mystical, but it it makes sense to me. Hey, it's time to pay your taxes. Oh, okay. Uh, how much do I owe you? What's the total amount? Oh, we're not going to tell you that. Uh, why not? We just don't want to, really, you know? So, uh, you figure it out. But you do know how much I owe you, right? Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course we do. But you're not going to tell me. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you figure that out. But what happens if I pay you the wrong amount? Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Pay every single penny because if you don't, we'll find you. <laughs> you know, where does this money go exactly? Like, what do you guys use this for? You're asking too many questions. So how about we just take you to prison, huh? No, 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 no. Uh, just... Take this, okay? It's it's all I have. Thank you. We're gonna bomb a lot of countries with this. Wait, what? I mean, uh, education. It's gonna go toward education. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Man, this hurts me, I'm not gonna lie, because I really do not like the tax system. Do not get me wrong, I think taxes could be utilized for good, but I definitely think that they're blown way out of proportion. I think it's like, I think that the government is probably one of the biggest criminal organizations that's taken people's money legally, and it it needs to change because we pay taxes for everything, food, gas, vehicles, houses, 
everything has a tax base. You get taxes taken out of your check when you work, unless you're on an I-9, then you have to take your own taxes out of it. And then at the end of the year, you have to pay more taxes towards your taxes. <laughs> you might get something back, but you still have to make sure you file this information and file it correctly because you might get audited. Even in the process of making this video, I just got mail from the IRS because they want me to pay my taxes. <laughs> I think that it's so crazy that we have to pay so many taxes. And again, I don't mind taxes if it's going for a great cause like fix the roads, build better buildings and things like that. But it just seems like it's going nowhere, but out of our pockets. The most unfiltered truth that runs through every single human being is this. Everything that you want, you don't really want. Because if you wanted it, you would already have it. And the reason why you have the things that you have in your life is because you couldn't live without it. And the reason why you are where you are at, and this goes for everybody, mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, is because in the DNA that runs through your bloodstream, it is okay with you to be there. And let me take that back. So if I put your head on fire right now, time wouldn't matter. Your mom calling you, nothing would matter besides putting that fire out. Even if your worst enemy was looking at you laughing, you would jump in a, in a, in a mud, in a, in a nasty puddle outside if you had to, because you're moving with that much urgency to put the fire out. So when it comes to your life, why haven't you put out those fires with the same amount of urgency? And I can tell you why, because deep down inside, it's okay with you to be there. And that's just a, that's just an unfiltering raw truth for every single human. That goes from the human that doesn't have a pot to piss in all the way up to the billionaire that has it all. He could not live without himself not being there. Just truth. I guess basically to sum up what he was saying is if you don't have it, you just don't want it bad enough. I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. I would definitely, if I want something, I'm going to get it. I'm going to work for it. I'm going to push myself to get this achievement of whatever it is that I want to obtain. So I, I don't, but, but it just doesn't always work in that favor because maybe you don't, Maybe you want to be an athletic runner and you don't have any legs. So you can't use that same term for that kind of scenario. You'd have to change it up a little bit. If you want to be an athletic runner and you don't have any legs, you might want to look into power chair racing. So, I mean, I get what he's saying. I just do not necessarily agree with it for every context because not everybody has the capabilities to be or get what they want, even if they try extremely hard. Shit is about to start making sense. So this little piece right here is that gateway process that is floating around, has been floating around for fucking years now. And I'm pretty sure they conducted it back in like the 70s or the 80s. This is on your CIA government website, so yeah. And basically what it talks about is that we can motherfucking manifest because we live in an energetic field. It's telling you in so many words and so many science jargon that you live in a simulated reality. And in this part, it talks about how your brain is a motherfucking projector. So let me give you an example. Because people don't understand by now that technology represents who we are. So whatever your technology can do, babe, you can do. So back in the day, my brother used to download games off of like LimeWire and then would make like Xbox um, disc and stuff like that to like sell to his friends or whatever. And when I found out that was a thing, I was like so into the game The Sims, but only on the computer. So I was like, can you do that on a computer? And he was like, yeah, but it actually is a lot harder to do it with a computer than it is like a game console or something like that. So I said, okay, bet. So my little nine-year-old self Googled and looked it up at how to do it. And basically all I had to do was download this software that like flips like images in front of like this projector in my computer. And if it does it right, it will convince my computer that I now have every expansion pack of The Sims and The Sims game itself without even having the floppy physical disk itself. And it worked. So that all goes to tell you that's how our brain is. There is a light in our fucking brain, like a projector, and whatever image you place in front of it, it will convince you that this is your reality. Starting to sound familiar? The entertainment industry, the government, influencers, what do they all have in common? If they put shit in front of you, you're going to fall for it. 
This is why it's so difficult to get into the entertainment industry and they only pick certain kind of people and people believe in industry plans because they need these people to serve their agenda as they're in front of your eyes, which will have you manifest things. There's a reason why we have so many crisis situations, especially in America, or why news itself is so absolutely terrible and negative 98% of the time. And this is coming from a journalist herself. Because whatever's in front of your projector, you're going to manifest. This is why everybody wants to pick up an influencer that has a lot of followers. Because this influencer now has a lot of eyes. And if you pick them up and know how to control them the right way, then they will put things in front of these people that will have them manifest. I definitely see where she's coming from with this. I do not disagree. I mean, if you if you think negatively and you assume the worst out of a scenario, then you're probably going to get the worst out of the scenario. That's why it's always good to try to be positive about a lot of the outcomes in life that happen. To an extent, of course, you can't just think positive about everything because not everything is positive. But when it comes to manifesting, there is a level of positivity that you have to have with it. Do I think that you can magically manifest things into existence? No, I do not think that at all. I do believe that manifestation is real, but it's a form of work, basically. Like, if you want it bad enough, you have to work towards it. For example, this lady, like she said, she wanted the Sims on the computer. Her brother said it can't be done. She manifested it to be by doing her own research, figuring out how to do all the little secrets to make the game unlock to be what she wanted. And it was within the realm of possibility and it happened. That was a accurate form of manifestation to me. Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts of manifestation are because I think people think that manifestation is done a whole bunch of different ways. These things have the ability to be just about anywhere in the world in 30 minutes after launch. I work principally as a conceptual artist. Most of my clients are in the defense industry. I occasionally work directly for the military, but most of the time I work for civilian corporations that are defense contractors. They build weapon systems and things for the military. All the major defense contractors that work for General Dynamics, Lockheed, Northrop, McDonnell Douglas, Boeing, and below him and to his left was this, this black diamond-shaped aircraft. This pilot, in recounting the story to Hal McCormick, says that he called his ground controller and said, why didn't you tell me there's other traffic in my area? Why didn't you tell me that there's somebody else here? And they said, well, because there is nobody else there. And he said, well, the hell there isn't. I can see him right here, and the plane looks like this. It's black and diamond-shaped. With that, this thing banked away from him, hit the afterburners, and took off. and disappeared in the clouds. And the next thing that happened was he got a call from the ground control unit, which just happened to be the tower at Nellis Air Force Base, and it said, divert to Nellis, land, stay in the aircraft, don't depart the aircraft. Someone will meet you there. So he immediately diverted to Nellis, landed the plane, waited until some MPs came out, and he took him out of the plane, handcuffed him, spent several days talking to him about the aircraft that he did not see. Issues. I found a system that had been designed and patented by a couple of scientists working at Caltech in Pasadena under contract with, I believe it was the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in NASA. And they had developed a whole computerized network of sensors and systems and computers that was all linked fiber optically. Well... Why would that make any difference? Why would you want to have a system that's all linked fiber optically? And the reason is, is that if you find a way to control gravity and maybe reduce the mass of a vehicle, the, the very thing that makes it float, if you find a way to reduce the mass of the vehicle and propel it at ungodly speeds, like in the video where Brad said it hopped three times and then phew, took off like a shot, if you're able to do that, then... What are the other side benefits of that? If you've somehow found a way of tapping into this, this scalar field, this zero-point energy, if what the scientists believe is true, that the zero-point energy is actually what keeps the electrons around the atomic structure of everything in our universe, so it keeps them energized, it keeps those little electrons spinning in their different clouds around the nucleus of every atom in our world, keeps them going keeps them from crashing into the nucleus like a satellite orbiting the Earth that gets pulled into the atmosphere by gravitational drag. Well, if you have a way of interfering with that interaction, that absorption of zero-point energy by those electrons, then they begin to slow down. And every atom 
in the universe is just like a little gyroscope. It's got all these electrons spinning around the nucleus, and they have kind of a gyroscopic effect, which is the effect we call inertia and mass. You have one nucleus with a proton and neutron and one electron, helium, or excuse me, hydrogen, you know, spinning around like that. No, not very much mass, not too much inertia. But you take uranium-235 with 235 electrons all spinning around in their different clouds. There's a lot of mass there, a lot of inertia. It's because it's like a bigger gyroscope in a way. I mean, that's the, the analogy that I've kind of picked up here. But if you have a way of interfering with that absorption of zero-point energy so those electrons become de-energized, they begin to slow down, the effect of that inertia, that gyroscopic effect, begins to drop off, and the mass drops off too. Even though the atomic structure is intact, even though it's still there, it's still uranium, but it's not as heavy. What if you have a system, a, a, a device, that absorbs that zero-point energy and prevents it from interacting with the atomic structure of your vehicle? And at the same time, is providing additional power to the capacitor section, this, this, this whole electrical system that's going on in the vehicle that's running. What happens is that as you go faster, as you accelerate, all that added energy, which would keep those electrons spinning faster and faster and increasing the mass, like Einstein described, that same energy would be converted into thrust. But it's not allowed, it's not, it's not being channeled in a way that allows it to interact with the atomic structure of the vehicle and make it get heavier and more massive, have more inertia. So the faster you go, literally, the faster you are able to go because you're tapping all that energy, which would otherwise increase your mass, just like Einstein said. So in effect, the faster you go, the easier it gets to, the easier it becomes to, to go up to and exceed the speed of light. Now, Brad said that in this exhibit at Norton Air Force Base, that a three-star general said that these vehicles were capable of doing light speed or better. Oh, by the way, and the largest of three vehicles was about 120 to 130 feet in diameter. I mean, that's, that's massive when you think about it. It's just huge. I suggested that we get together and go to this air show, and I'd heard that they were going to have a, a, a flyby or a flying demonstration by the SR-71 Blackbird. And he seemed to know a lot about that, so I said, well, let's, let's do that. Well... It turned out the last minute the, the magazine Popular Science came back again and, and said that they had some really, really crazy deadline for another illustration. They wanted to know if I could do it over the weekend, have it finished by the following Monday or Tuesday. Um, so I had to, to beg off on this air show. But Brad had already made arrangements to go uh, by himself, and he was going to meet me there, but he was going to bring one of his clients with him, and he was north of what later became known as the Area 51 weapons range that's north of Las Vegas in Nevada. The woman that Brad was with said, follow me, and they go walking down to the other end of the airfield, away from where the crowds were, to this huge hangar. It's got to be one of the largest hangars um, in the Air Force inventory. There was a cordon of military police around the hangar, and he walked up to one, and he said, do you want, why are you here? And he says, I'm here to talk to uh, the guy who's running the show. And uh, so the guard goes in, out comes uh, the same guard with uh, a gentleman in a three-piece suit who immediately recognizes this, this fellow that, uh, that Brad is with. And inside this area, they had, um, you know, all the lights turned off, and they go in, they turn the lights on, and here are three flying saucers floating off the floor, no cables suspended from the ceiling holding them up, no landing gear underneath, just floating hovering above the floor. And they had little exhibits. They had a TV, a little uh, videotape running, showing the smallest of the three vehicles sitting out in the desert, presumably uh, over a dry lake bed someplace like Area 51. And it, uh, it showed this vehicle making um, three little quick hopping motions like that and then accelerating straight up and out of sight until you couldn't see it completely disappearing from view in just a couple of seconds. I mean, just boom, no sound, no sonic boom, nothing. Um, they had a cutaway illustration, pretty much like the one I'll show you in a little bit, that showed what the internal components of this vehicle were, and they had some of the panels taken off so you could actually look in and see oxygen tanks and a little robotic arm that could extend out from the side of the vehicle for collecting samples and things. So obviously, this is a vehicle that not only is capable of flying around through the atmosphere, but it's also capable of going out to space and collecting samples. And it's using a type of propulsion system that doesn't make any noise, 
as far as he could see, had no moving parts. Um, and didn't have any exhaust gases or fuel to be expended. It was just there, hovering. And the panels that were around that skirt were what had been removed so that he could see, you know, these big oxygen tanks inside. And he was very specific in describing the oxygen tanks as being about 16 to 18 inches in diameter, about six feet long, and they were all radially oriented like the spokes of the wheel. But this dome that was visible on the top was actually the upper half of a, a big sphere-shaped crew compartment that was in the middle of the vehicle. And around the widest, around the middle of this vehicle, later I determined using my conceptual artist skills, determined there were exactly 48 sections like thin slices of pizza pie, and each section within this casting, one big piece casting, 24 feet in diameter, probably weighed 4 or 5 tons, easy. Judging by the thickness and the diameter, it must have been monstrous in weight. Full of half-inch thick copper plates, each, each of the 48 sections had 8 copper plates. The plates were half an inch thick, and then the spacing in between them was like, um, you know, 125% the thickness of the, the plates. It was uh, about three quarters of an inch. So the half inch thick plates, three quarters of an inch of this dielectric material in between, this, this insulating material. So here we are back to the plate capacitors again and the, and the prospect of someone finding a way to use the B-field Brown effect, this levitation effect where you charge a capacitor and it lifts towards the positive plates. Now when you got eight plates stacked up in there, they alternate. It goes negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, what, four times. So you ultimately wind up with the positive plates always being above a set of negative plates. Yeah, I really enjoyed this clip a lot. Uh, I've never heard of this individual before. I believe his name is Mark McCandlish. Have any of you guys heard of this before? I've never heard of this individual at all. I'm out to try to find some of the best UFO whistleblowers that there are out there. If you have any information on people to look up, Please provide that because I'm very interested in this type of content. I, I love listening to them talk about the stuff. Whether it's real or fake, I don't know. It sounds genuine to me, but all of them sound genuine to me. They're, they're very confident as to what they're talking about, so it just makes it seem extremely real. But leave a comment, let me know what you thought about this video in particular, and if you've ever heard of Mark McCandlish. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but that's his name. And if you have any recommendations of who I should be doing some more research on, I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And like always, if you are interested in any of these clips that we watch today, they are down in the description below. There's links to each one in the order that we watch the videos. And with that being said, have a good day.